So uh, she's a volunteer, an activist, as well as a political junkie. She co-founded Ask Her and co-organized the 2018 Women's March YYC and was also selected as one of Canada's top 33 women in 2017 by Chatelaine. Please put your hands together for Asmahan Razavi. I don't know what fate means, but in Arabic, and I'm an Arab, we say inshallah, which means what God wants. And when I studied philosophy, I really believed that it was all about free will. Now, I think that fate has something more to do with the single biggest factor in my life, which has been failure. <laughs> um, failure is what I believe has driven my life um, from, from when I was a kid until now. And I'm a millennial, and it seems like I have a super shiny life on social media, but in between every single accomplishment has been failure after failure after failure. Um, and I'll tell you about my relationship with failure. I have feared failure my entire life, and it's actually prevented me from doing things that um, probably would have been really cool opportunities like climbing in Colombia or entering a contest and uh, <laughs> you know, doing a marathon in Antarctica with penguins. So I'm kind of sad about that now. Um, I was born to immigrant parents, and I'm an immigrant. And I would like to say that my parents were tiger parents, but in the Middle East, we don't have tigers. So they are the equivalent of whatever tiger parents are in the Middle East. And they taught me to work hard and to be the best that I could be. Um, and so I was basically a real life Hermione Granger, minus the wand. I was a know-it-all teacher's pet who did well at everything, and I was probably pretty annoying, and was like that uh, throughout my school career in undergrad. And then I moved to Calgary, and I set my sights on something I'd never really been successful in, which was my love life. And so I was in two back-to-back -back serious relationships, and spoiler alert, neither of them worked out. And I knew that fairly early on in both relationships, but I didn't want to fail. So I worked at, at, as hard at them as I could. Um, and then both of them kind of imploded, but I decided I would still not fail. And so in the span of a year, I went on about 25 first dates. Um, spoiler alert, none of them worked out either. <laughs> and I thought, okay, you know, it's not working out, so maybe I need to do something else. And I decided to see if I had any hobbies. And so it was, <laughs> ha ha guys, yeah. It was uh, 2015 and it was a few months out from the federal election and I met this woman named Kara. And she was like, hey, get involved in politics, come out door knocking with me. And once you get political, it's like a bug or a drug or something, it never stops. And so I took a senior position on a campaign of a friend of mine, Carrie Cundall, and I was really inspired by her because she's kind and smart and everything good. Um, and we worked 16 to 18 hours a day. I took unpaid leave from my job. Uh, spoiler alert, she didn't win. <laughs> <laughs> and it was kind of, it really kind of sucked, but I met two people on the campaign, both men, neither of whom I dated. And we, <laughs> we, uh, we co-founded a nonprofit together. There was an influx of Syrian refugees and we thought, hey, what can we do to make life a little bit different? And so um, we, basically created an app that had instructional videos on things like how to take Calgary Transit, um, how to get a driver's license and things like that and people could access the videos for free and it was really cool. We actually produced some videos for the city and we worked for organizations like the Center for Newcomers um, and other places like that and it was really, really exciting. And then one day I went out for lunch with my friends Kara and Carrie and we were talking about how we both really believe that there need to be more women, sorry, the three of us really believe there need to be more, more women in politics. and so. We were looking at city council, and at the time, only two out of 15 people on city council were women. And so we decided, well, no one's doing anything about it. Why don't we do something about it? And so we created this organization called Ask Her. And we went and asked as many people as possible, as many women as possible, to run for office. And as we were meeting with all these women, a friend of mine, Anila, who's in the audience today, was like, hey, Asmahan, why don't you run? And I thought, you know what? Like, no, I'm too young. Um, there's just no, it's not a good time in my life. And then I realized they were all excuses. And essentially, my fear of failure was creeping up and preventing me from doing something. So I decided to step up and run. And um, for the first month, and this is not an exaggeration, I did not sleep more than two hours a night 
because I was so scared. I, I kept thinking, why would anyone come out for me? Why would anyone volunteer or donate? Like, why? <laughs> and um, I was proven wrong. I had more than 100 volunteers by the end, and it was really exciting. And um, there were people who came out for me in the snow and the smoke uh, early in the morning to give out train at coffee stations, and they were just with me all the time. And it was an incredible experience, and it became almost the only purpose of my life for seven months. And then about the Friday before the election, um, just when I thought that, oh my God, if I lose, like the world is gonna be over, I realized that my family had been hiding from me that my brother had cancer. And so this photo was taken on that day and I'm faking being like really happy. And my campaign manager and my cam campaign said to me, we can do this campaign without you, don't worry. But I felt like I owed it to everyone to stick to it. And so um, we worked as hard as we could and then election day came around, and spoiler alert, I didn't win. <laughs> um, and I guess learning what, hap what, was, what, what the condition my brother had um, really put the whole election into perspective for me, but at the same time, I still felt like my purpose was gone. And so I didn't know in the weeks after what to do. But one door closed and another opened, and I was asked to co-organize the Women's March. Um, and I'm really, really excited about how it went. Um, we had 3,500 women, and through that, I got offered a job um, at the Status of Women, and I guess you can all tell by now I'm really passionate about uh, women's issues and about furthering women in leadership and everything like that. Um, and slowly, I realized that I had a purpose outside of running for office, uh, and that was something that I had almost forgotten. So I don't know what fate is, but I knew, do know that if I hadn't failed so spectacularly at my love life, I wouldn't have gotten involved in politics. And if I hadn't gotten involved in politics, I wouldn't have co-founded nonprofits. And if I hadn't done that, I wouldn't have met the people who ran, who encouraged me to run for office. And if I hadn't run for office, then I wouldn't have organized the Women's March and I wouldn't have the job that I do today. So um, take every failure you have and own it and accept it as a part of who you are. Thank you.